three days of, of MC&E. We had 2,500 roughly attendees this year, which is a uh, fairly high and with that I'll turn it over to uh, to Mike and to Phil to sort of give you a little color what the uh, the uh, the meeting was and we'll open up to questions and head on up to the reception good well first of all I'd like to welcome everyone here and welcome Phil Bird as our new incoming chairman Phil Thank I you. think you're gonna do a great job congratulations Thanks, appreciate it well good afternoon it, it is an exciting time for me and uh, uh, really a pinnacle in my career. You know, I've worked my entire adult life in the transportation arena. I, I truly live and uh, love this industry. Um, and and it's, it's in my fiber. I mean, diesel fuel got in my blood about 36 or 7 years ago, and I just simply can't get it out. It's what I do, it's what I love, and it's what I'll uh, continue to spend all of my time and energy in doing. So with that, I guess uh, if there's any questions. If I may, uh, we're always looking for a theme. We're always looking for something to wrap stuff up because we need to put it in the boxes because we need to explain it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, is it fair to say that one of the overriding themes this this week has been that perhaps it's time for trucking to take off the gloves and uh, get a little more forceful in dealing with uh, Congress and other politicians? I think we have to be very strategic. I think we have to be very um, direct in our approach. I mean, we know what's in the best interest of, of our industry, and we have to communicate that ever more effectively um, day by day. We have an exceptional staff in Washington leading this uh, industry, and what membership needs to do is we need to be united in supporting them. We need to help them and assist them in every way so that they can be successful. But, yeah, in, in many ways, uh, I, I heard it said at this conference this week, you know, every elected official in Washington knows what needs to be done. They just don't know how to do it and get reelected. And that's a tragedy. You know, Howard, if I could answer that, I think we accomplished a lot, this MC&E. Um, we got the lead ATA off the ground. It's an image program. It's young people, it's a messaging, it's communication. We got our image, the image program started on a soft launch. The image program, future leaders program, and the things that ATA is doing right now are a direct result of us trying to be stronger in our advocacy efforts. So I love the fact that you say ATA is taking its gloves off. But like Phil says, we're going to do it strategically. We need the public on our side. And the only way we can get that is through good image programs, getting young people in, getting people to understand how essential we are. So I think we accomplished a lot, Governor, and I, I hope everyone else here thinks the same thing. Yeah. And just to follow up on that, let me, let me just cite one example. You know, we had five state associations um, in Washington, D.C., right at the heat and, and at the peak of the time that uh, the uh, sleep apnea bill was moving through Congress. And uh, not moving through Congress yet, but that the agency wanted to do, you know, uh, not rulemaking, but guidance. ATA collected those five states, and we really showed some horsepower on the hill as we just uh, filled the hallways of Congress and we communicated ATA's message effectively. And I would submit to you today that whether it be hours of service, whether it be electronic onboard recorders, where, you know, whatever the issue might be, when ATA engages in a united way to horsepower that's under our hood, we can get a lot done. And one more change I forgot to tell you. We made a huge change to our policy just now by changing the eligibility rules for the National Truck Driving Championship. That is a great change for this industry. We had this ATA National Truck Driving Championship. With this change, all state trucking association members can participate. It's going to be really the National Truck Driving Championship. That's going to, I think, increase our power and, and our grassroots effort. So that was a great change as well. I think one of the big changes here. Yeah. Now that Helen Thomas has asked a question, anybody else? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> First question. Oh, you're the only one who can get away with that. <laughs> sure. I'll get it later. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little more details about the uh, truck driving championship change, what the, what the actual change entails, and, and what the new eligibility Well, is? you know, in the old eligibility, you had to be a, a truck driver or an owner-operator for an ATA member company, or 
we'd give this one-time waiver if you were a state trucking association. You couldn't be announced under the name of your trucking company because you weren't ATA and so it was Joe John Doe driver competing. It, it was just uncomfortable and wrong. So now it's going to be, if you belong to a state trucking association, you don't have to belong to ATA. We certainly want you to, but you can compete as a full-fledged member of our federation. And so anybody that ha has a trucking company that is a member of a state trucking association, drivers and owner operators are now eligible to compete on the national basis. They still have to qualify through winning their state trucking association or um, company event, but uh, we'll, we'll recognize them as full I'm participants. I'm surprised at the lack of, of uh, controversy surrounding this. Frankly, in years past, there's been a lot of acrimony over this. I didn't hear a single voice of dissent, either at the exec or at the board of directors. Today. Well, I, I just think it's been an issue that, that's been given a great deal of attention, you know, and, and, and effective attention. And as the governor said in our executive committee meeting, and rightfully so, and I agree with him, it, it just um, exercises our federation in its entirety uh, to be able to expand our driving championships. And, and I think it's a very good thing. So, how it's, uh, I don't think it was uh, any controversy because. Uh, we had done a good bit of work before we ever got to. Uh, yeah, I agree with just the, the 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 history here. Of course, as some of you know, is that this was originally part of the Wren plan, yeah. uh, and the idea was that um, if you really wanted to compete in the truck driving championships, it would force your company into joining the ATA, um, and uh, that obviously, in a number of cases, didn't prove to be true, and. The last time this was brought before the board of directors, it just so happened that John Wren was in the room. Uh, and, and John is very proud of the yeah. hard work they did, and rightly so, and, and he rose and spoke against uh, the recommendation, mm -hmm. I don't know, five or uh, six, six years ago. ago. That's how we got the, um, the one-time wild card. That's so right. we kind of gradually went there before, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it's just a natural evolution. But this is a good thing for our industry and our association and for the truck driving championships. Was there some push from uh, TAEC to, uh, to go in this direction? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were unanimously in favor of this uh, change. Governor, your speech yesterday drew some notice uh, beyond the hallways here. I was uh, wondering if there's any follow-up to, to what was said yesterday. Any other feedback or, um, uh, you know, uh, how you take those comments to uh, the rest of the industry that might not have been here and, and kind of proceed forward in terms of what needs to be done to accomplish some of the uh, industry goals? Well, I mean, I, I don't think I, I'll say anything differently uh, right now than I, than I said yesterday. I mean, I think uh, throughout the business community, uh, throughout our country, there was a lot of concern and frustration that, that we could get to the brink of default uh, and, and, and jeopardize our financial markets, our standing in the world, the world economy. I mean, this was, this was about as serious as, as, as it gets. Uh, and when, when I work for and represent individuals who move commerce, um, I have to take note and, and, uh, and I just felt, uh, I, I, I felt like I needed to to speak my mind, um, and I, I do think the Republicans mishandled, seriously mishandled, um, the events of a few weeks ago. Um, and, uh, you know, this has been building. This isn't like it just uh, sort of happened a one-time occurrence and, and uh, all is forgotten, uh, I think, uh, throughout this country, and I referenced the comments from Bruce Jostin at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, where they've, you know, indicated a willingness to maybe take a harder look at their long-standing history of not being involved in primary elections in, in order to make sure that, that uh, you know, a candidate that, uh, that appears to be prepared to be a greater supporter of the you know, business community and the concerns that the business community has, they might want to wade in and get involved. And I, I know how hard Barry pottle has been working and all of these gentlemen have, have worked to, to help us build our pack, build our state association efforts, and I'm just saying one of the additional uh, elements now of our effectiveness needs to be a real close analysis of uh, who we're supporting and why and what the value prop proposition to ATA is in exchange for that support. Seems, it seems like a fair 
and reasonable kind of uh, perspective to, yeah. to take. Absolutely. But yes, some did take note. <laughs> yeah, earlier this afternoon, uh, you guys helped launch a new industry-wide uh, image campaign. And uh, as a follow-up, I'm wondering, you know, what do you see as you know, the necessary steps to, you know, for that to really catch on, to really make a difference in the way uh, the average person outside the industry uh, views trucking, and also to the point where elected officials uh, uh, start to take notice? Well, that's, that's the $64 million question. We, how do we reach the public? And how do we reach the public in such a way that we really have changes with the elected officials? According to our ad agency, their take is that we need to reach the public through an emotional appeal. You know, I'm proud of my dad. My dad's a truck driver. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad I can get goods when I want to. My business runs on trucking. Uh, trucking delivers the American economy and, and we drive the American economy and deliver the American dream. That's how we say it. So we're going to have to find a way to actually reach the general public. It's not going to be easy, but uh, that's the goal here. Reach the general public and through them our elected officials. Mike. You haven't yeah. been outgoing chairman very long, but beyond just <laughs> yeah. any, if you for, not, maybe if it's tonight. tonight. First of all, I'm still chairman <laughs> until midnight, according right. to the rules. So back <laughs> off just a little <laughs> bit, okay? I apologize for. Do you turn into a pumpkin at midnight? <laughs> I'll be I'll be drunk as a skunk at midnight. I guarantee you that. Beyond just the conference, uh, just wondering if you had any time to reflect on on a year. I'm sure that went by very quickly. And, uh, it did go by quickly. It was the best year of my life. I've told a lot of people that it was wonderful. I, you're in for a treat, I'll tell you that, Phil and, and Dwayne, when you guys get going. But uh, ATA is a big ship, the, and the industry is even bigger. I mean, it's tough to turn it, and it's tough to change culture. And you know, it's frustrating. You know, I'm used to running a, a, a lot. Well, actually, my budget's bigger than your budget, Governor. <laughs> but it, I, I'm used to running a company that I can run. And uh, I, I think Phil's going to feel that frustration because, you know, we're only a one-year chairman, you know. I mean, even though we've been in the chairs for a long time, mm -hmm. right, um, it is, it's tough to get everything done that you think is right because we are such a diverse industry. But uh, making some small steps, moving the, the arrow just a little bit, I hope that's what I've accomplished. Um, it, it feels like I have a little bit, but uh, I sure have enjoyed my year. And uh, we have a great industry. You know that? I mean, the people in this industry. We should be the most powerful business interest group in America. That's, that's nothing. I, that's my goal. We should be. We are so important to this country. We should be the strongest, most influential lobbying group out there, the best association out there, the best public affairs group out there. A lot of pressure on Sean Lears down there. And so uh, that's, that's what my goal is, and if I can move the needle a little bit towards that, I, I feel like I may have accomplished something. But, uh, you know, I think Phil's going to accomplish a lot more than me. Um, if, if I could just uh, freelance here and say, Mike obviously uh, has been five years working his way up to the chairman's post. He now takes over as chairman of the executive committee. Uh, the year after that, he becomes chairman of the nominating committee. I mean, it's not like this is a, these are, I mean, it, it might be a one and done on chairman, but it's a, a very long, uh, you know, service to ATA. And, and uh, Phil obviously now fills the chairman's role. Dwayne moves up to first vice chairman. And, and um, you know, in the old days, I think it was probably common practice that the chairman alone would be engaged some with the senior staff and would travel to some state association events, and that was probably the end of it. And as I've probably told you all many times before now, but I mean, all of these gentlemen, uh, ladies, when Barbara was involved, uh, devote a lot of time, travel a lot extensively, represent the industry uh, widely throughout the country at, at a whole lot of events well beyond state association gatherings. Mm -hmm. um, we're thrilled to have Pat Thomas from UPS uh, joining the, the, the leadership ranks. And, and I mean, I think it goes without saying that to have uh, to have the UPS brand uh, uh, connected to ATA leadership yeah, at this level is is a right. is is an important you know mm -hmm. step for us, and so uh, we're looking forward to Pat's involvement in this, and, and obviously Dave Manning and Kevin Burt. So I have a I have a very, a very fine engaged team, and I wouldn't want to have it any any other way because it's through the involvement of these individuals that we get a lot more clarity uh, in, in 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 our direction. 
uh, and in in uh, in our priorities and as it should be. So yeah. I think the biggest challenge for everyone going forward is just the diverse nature of our industry. Uh, one thing in my travels, I, I learned about so many trucking companies that, and the uh, way they operate, no idea. So uh, trying to keep this industry together and yeah. on a unified voice, it's going to be a challenge going forward. What do you it, think, Phil? No doubt about it. I mean, I think our strength is in our unity, and our weakness is in our disunity. So um, I heard it said, and I think it was the governor again that said it this week, and I, I, I it just it registered and stuck in my mind. Our industry is a circulatory system for this country and for it for this commerce, you know. And think about it: without it, everything stops. So uh, yeah, we are an important industry. We are an essential industry, and we do impact American lives. And back to the question about how do how do we uh, begin to uh, make an uh, effect and move the needle on image? We do it one company at a time, one organization at a time. Mike at Combined Transport, they've got to buy into this program. Well, look, Highway Express has to buy into it. Logistics has to buy into it. UPS has to buy into it. And then, once one at a time, our, our, our individual companies become uh, image aware. We become industry aware from an industry perspective. And I think there's great things ahead of us uh, on the image front. And in my year as chairman, I will tell you that it will be a key part of, of my uh, campaign, as well as, and you may have already heard me say this, um, I want to rebuild the respect that our most important resource lacks today, and that's the respect that our drivers get in America. They're disrespected almost every place they go, and uh, we have to change that. That's part of our image. Uh, anybody else? Questions? Um, last year, uh, the kind of, kind of the theme that we felt felt from the conference was that um, with CSA and the, the various issues that the industry had identified with CSA, uh, checking in a year later, how is that? What's happened in the time? And, and do you feel that uh, uh, FMCSA has, has done um, work uh, to, to, to listen to the industry on those concerns? Well, you now I'm not sweating because you're asking me these tough questions. It's awfully hot in here. That's why I'm sweating. Because <laughs> you turned on the air. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have to be a little careful what I say about FMCSA um, because I've worked with them a lot this year and I've been frustrated with the lack of cooperation on a couple of fronts with F mm -hmm. FMCSA. I, I think that's fair to say. Uh, me personally, I've been frustrated. I think the ATA has a good relationship with FMCSA, mm -hmm. and we've had seen some good growth and changes with uh, CSA. Um, but uh, to me, uh, I think we need to change FMCSA. This is uh, this is as past chairman. I'm saying this now. Okay, uh, I don't like FMCSA having the, just the S focus. I mean, we all focus on safety, but I think it should be the FMCA. Federal Motor Carrier Administration. We need some balance in their approach. Uh, passing rules like the hours of service rule that had no justification or poor justification to get that thing passed, uh, that's not the kind of thing that we need to uh, get accomplished a stronger America. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I think it's a challenge for us to continue to have a good relationship with them. I know the governor's walks a fine li a line and the staff does. Uh, we've got some things that we're going to be working with them on the future, so we need to continue that process. But that's my personal view, and we need to have a strong Congress that will allow us to say, hey, guys, they're not doing what we want. Let's step up and, and change, pass a sleep apnea bill, stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. and I think that's a great example of, of, of our uh, potential mm -hmm. impact on how FMCSA goes about doing their work. Mm -hmm. The governor and others from ATA had to, had the privilege of going over to the Department of Transportation and meeting with new Secretary Anthony Fox and, of course, who – uh, FMCSA's administrator Ann Farrell reports to, and we were well received. And uh, and what he told us was that, that his door was always open to listen to us. Uh, and I think Mike uh, hits a good point in that um, we have to have a, a positive relationship with FMCSA. They're an important agency. They have a great uh, influence on on how we operate as an industry. But again, ATA showed its horsepower on this sleep apnea bill and we got and we moved the needle and there are many many other issues that we can do the same i agree